in this video we are going to be looking at trespass to land generally but then more specifically we are also going to be covering uh, the definition of trespass to land then also we'll be defining what actual amounts to land in law and then also we'll be looking at who can sue for trespass to land then we are also going to be covering what really amounts to trespass to land and uh, under that we are going to be looking at trespass to the airspace we'll be looking at trespass to the subway then we'll also be looking at um, trespass to the highways as well as the subsoil then also in this video we are going to be covering the doctrine of continuous trespass very very important and we'll be unpacking the principles governing it and then we'll also be looking at the doctrine of trespass ab initio and then finally we'll be covering the defenses to trespass to land hello there how are you doing my name is Mutiaba Conrad I am a lawyer and a private law tutor and before we start on our class I encourage you to ensure that you've subscribed to my channel this is really really important to you because every time we release videos if you are uh, or if you have subscribed to our channel then definitely those videos will always be brought to your attention and you'll never miss out a single class and then also finally students interested in private law tutorial sessions please feel free to contact us our numbers are down in the description box please contact us you can whatsapp us you can call us we'll be able to help you improve on your grades and grades really matter and continuously students who are on our private law tutorial sessions have been proven to outperform their colleagues who do not have any sort of mentorship so please call us you can always make an arrangement at your university at ldc or at your workplace or at home in holidays or any time that is convenient for the both of us and the team uh, here handling our private law tutorial session so let's jump directly into what we're going to be looking at today and just as i said we're going to be covering trespass to land and then we are, are going to start by defining what actually amounts to trespass to land but however before we go to that i want to share with you some of the fundamental principles uh, governing the tort of trespass to land so that you're able to appreciate them from the onset they are very important principles which you must know and have at your fingertips and the very first aspect that you must not as pertains the tort of trespass to land is that trespass to land as a tort is actionable per se okay very very important what do we mean when we say actionable per se is that this tort can be sustained without actually you proving any sort of damage so meaning that the trespasser cannot say that there isn't any trespass to land simply because there is no damage that has occurred to your land that's what we mean when we say that the tort is actionable per se it is sustainable without you actually necessarily having to prove or show any damage so that's point number one please look at the case of franklin versus uh, Jefferies where court held that a hand through a window was actually trespass to land very interesting that if you pass your hand through someone's window into their house that actually amounts to trespass to land there is not any need to show that actually the other person has suffered any sort of damage so that's point number one but also very very important and please i insist on this it's very important principle to master from the onset that the tort of trespass to land here the interference must be direct and intentional please 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 this is very important to note for a tort to amount to trespass to land it has to be direct and intentional okay very very important because if it is indirect then that is not trespass to land that is actually a nuisance that's a whole different thought altogether please very important to note for this to amount to trespass to land it has to be the interference has to be direct and intentional the moment the interference is indirect emphasis mine then the same is not trespass to land but however it is the thought of nuisance now i'm going to share with you an example because it tends really to confuse our uh, researchers and students as what actually we mean when we say that the interference has to be direct i'm going to share with you one example of um, a direct uh, action okay so for example assuming i planted my mango tree okay uh okay let's assume i planted um, a mango tree onto your land okay if the land is yours the mango tree is mine so i plant it on your land that is a direct action 
okay? But however, if I plant the mango tree onto my land, but however, its branches grow and they protrude into your land, or maybe the roots of my mango tree, which are planted on my land, but they, they grow into your land, okay? Then that interference is indirect, okay? So I guess that example will help you to understand what we mean where we say that the interference has to be direct and intentional. So the aspect of, direct, of, of directness is actually clearly illustrated by that example which I have shared with you. So now with that at the back of our minds, let's now pro proceed to look at the definition of trespass to land. So what is trespass to land? Basically, trespass to land, to land by way of definition, this is a direct physical and unlawful interference with land which is in the possession of another person. So basically that is the definition and please, I encourage you to go and look at the case of Robson versus Hallett. It's a case of 1967, Volume 2, All England Law Reports, page 407. The facts there are really very interesting. Please go and, 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 uh, and familiarize yourself with it. But just briefly to share with you the facts, here, uh, here what happened is that a police officer was invited into a house to pursue inquiries. But what happened is that, of course, this was with the consent um, of him being there. Uh, but later on, of course, that consent was withdrawn and he tried to leave. Okay, so the police officer then tries to leave after the consent was withdrawn. Now, before he could do so, meaning before he could leave, he was actually assaulted. Okay, now the issue in court was whether at the time of assault he was a lawful or unlawful visitor. Now, once permission is withdrawn, okay, very important to note, a reasonable time must be allowed for the visitor to leave, okay? So that's the principle. If you withdraw consent, then you have to give the other person some reasonable time for them to leave. Provided the person does so, okay, with reasonable expedition, if you tell them to leave and they leave immediately, he would, he would then not be a trespasser while he was doing so. So you come onto my land with my invitation, you later, I later on tell you to leave my land, and if you're leaving immediately, then you do not become a trespasser. But however, if you continue to stay onto my land, even after I tell you to leave, and I give you reasonable time to leave, and you refuse, then at that moment, you become a trespasser. Then also important to note really, is that placing an object on or against land will also, as a matter of law, amount to trespass very very important principle to note there now let's now proceed and look at what is land okay because it's very important for you to understand what actual amounts to land in law this is really really important now land includes please note the surface of the soil okay so the top aspect of the land the normal land on which we walk that is land okay any building erected on the land so buildings is also actually land okay under the law it also includes the airspace above your land, that, that huge sky, that all of it under the law is recognized as land. And then the subsoil beneath it. So underground your, under, underneath your house or deep down in the subsoil, that is also land within the legal definition. So that is what amounts to land. And the locus classicus really for you that you must note at all material times is the case of Bernstein versus Skyviews and General Limited. It's a case of 1977, Volume 2, All England Law Reports, page 902. That case is very authoritative, but briefly, uh, in this case, court held that ownership of the airspace is limited to what one can ordinarily use. So whereas actually the airspace also includes land, but you actually don't own the whole airspace up to, to the heavens, no. The, your, your airspace or your land or the space under above your land is limited to what you can reasonably use, okay? So if you can re reasonably use about, let's say, uh, maybe 7,000 meters um, up in the sky, then any other aircraft that uh, flies within that area, that would amount to trespass. But high, high up in the skies, okay, if that is not the space that you can reasonably use, then it doesn't amount to trespass to land if, for example, an aircraft flew 
okay, over such type of land, which you, or rather uh, airspace, which you reasonably do not use. So this is really very important to note. So whether an aircraft flying above your house would really amount to trespass to land, this is a question of fact, depending on the airspace and the space above your house that you can reasonably use for your own uh, purposes. So basically, that is what amounts to land, and I thought it's very important for us to streamline it from the onset so that you're able to understand the total trespass to land in perspective. So before we proceed, once again, I want to encourage you uh, to ensure that you subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification, the red button, or somewhere just beneath there, you'll see the word subscribe. Just click on it. Also, turn on the notification so that every time I release videos, this is always brought to your attention. Then also turn on the, the bell. The bell is very important. Turn it on and turn on all notifications so that you're always in the know whenever we release videos. And then students, again, interested in private law tutorial sessions, please contact us. Our numbers are down in the description box. We can always make an arrangement. We can help you improve your grades. We'll comb through the law together and we'll give you an insight. It's a whole mentorship program where we really help to educate you, to mentor you, to take you through all the various pro, um, uh, topics uh, that you're covering in your law school, and then also to help train you so that you don't go through the mistakes which we went through while we're still studying uh, our law degrees. So let's now continue to look at parties to an action, or basically what we call who can sue. So if it's the total of trespass to land, who can actually sue? Is it anyone or everybody? Now, the principle is a person in possession has a right to sue. Okay, so the moment you are in possession of the land, then the position of the law is you can actually sue for trespass to land. Now, it's important to, to note here that possession can either be factual or de jure possession. This is really, really very, very important. Now, let's now proceed uh, to, to another aspect of uh, our thought of trespass to land, and that is uh, actions that actually amount to trespass to land. So what really amounts to trespass to land? What types of actions or aspects that actually amount to this? So we're going to look at um, trespass to the airspace. So if you trespass above my land in my airspace, that is actually um, one action that is recognized by law to amount to trespass. Now, it's important here to note, again, like I said earlier, that protection will be given by courts against something which occurs at a lower level, okay, and has a more immediate impact than an overflying aircraft. So very, very important to note, like I said earlier, if the aircraft, for example, is flying so, so, so high up in the skies, and that is not land that you would ordinarily, or the airspace that you would ordinarily use, because you'd never use it, honestly speaking, then the same would never amount to trespass to land. But if, for example, the airplane uh, or a helicopter or any aircraft flies very low, close to your roof, okay, reasonably close, or in an airspace which you could reasonably use, then the same would, under the law, amount to trespass to land. Please, the locus class class, I encourage you to look at the case of Kelson versus Imperial Tobacco Company Limited. It's a case of 1957, volume 2QB, page 334. And basically, in this case, it was held that an advertising sign which overhung the claimant's land amounted to trespass to the airspace. And of course, judgment was entered in favor of Kelson. So very important case there to note. Let's now proceed to look at a trespass to the highways. So it can actually also amount to trespass, okay? If, for example, a group of people, a person is on the highway, court has held in a number of cases, and I'll briefly be sharing with you that the same actually can amount to trespass to land. To land. Now, it has been accepted for a very long time that the public has a right of passage along um, the highway, for example. You always have a right of passage. Uh, for example, look at the case of Direct of Public Prosecution versus Jones. It's a case of 1999, SC page 240. And basically in this case, just briefly, please go and read the whole facts and the whole case. I continue to encourage my students when I share with you these cases, please go and read the whole judgment. It's very, very important for you to understand such thoughts in um, 
in a good uh, perspective. So the majority of House of Lords really in that case agreed that any reasonable use of the highway provided it's not involving a new sense of obstruction is lawful. So the principle is if a person, a group of persons use the highway to do any uh, activity or any action that is recognized by the law and it doesn't amount to a new sense, then the same is lawful and it would not be or it would not be recognized as an obstruction that is the general rule but ladies and gentlemen the exceptions to that general rule and there are a number of situations where court has actually held that a personal group of persons using the highway in a certain way actually would amount to trespass to land okay under the under the action of uh, trespass on the highway. For example, uh, court has held that if, for example, you use the highway to disrupt shooting, that is actually trespass to land. So assuming you stand on the highway, so you use that highway to disrupt, let's say there is a neighboring piece of land where shooting is ongoing. Maybe it could be shooting for hunting or anything of the sort. And you are based on the highway and you use the highway to disrupt the shooting, there is a plethora of cases where court has actually recognized this as an action that amounts to trespass to land. Please, I encourage you to go and look at the case of uh, Harrison versus Duke of Rutland. It's a case of 1893, volume one, Queen's Bench, page 142. So such an action would actually amount to trespass on the highway and consequently amounting to trespass to land. But also actions, for example, to gain information about horse racing trials when you're basing on the highway have also continuously been held by court to amount to trespass on the highway and subsequently amounting to trespass on the land. So let's take, for example, you you are placed either as an individual group of persons, you base yourselves on the highway, and then you use that highway, for example, to spy or to get information about horse race trials. Let's say it's a competition, and next to the highway, there is a piece of land where people are trying to make uh, trials to compete, and you use the highway to actually spy or get information about horse race trials. Or it could be even anything. It could be motor race trials or anything of the sort, football trials or anything, but you're based on the highway. There are a number of cases. For example, I encourage you to look at the case of uh, Hickman versus My Say. It's a case of 1900, volume 1, QB, page 752. And court has actually held that the same amounted to trespass to land. So basically, that's the principle governing trespass on the highway. Very, very important to note. Let's now proceed to look at trespass to the subsoil. We already looked at this when we were looking at the definition of what actually amounts to land. And we said that even underneath your land or down down underground that also amounts to land and therefore we are going to look at the principle governing um, trespass to the subsoil so as we already really explained in material detail that the same actual amounts to trespass to land therefore trespass to subsoil is also trespass as well please look at the case of star energy well benson limited versus bacado sa very, very authoritative. Please go and look at it. The citation, it's a case of uh, 2010, Volume 3, All England Law Reports, page 975, where a court held that by passing uh, pipes underneath someone's house or underneath their ground, it actually amounted to trespass to land. But it's also very important when you're looking at this case to have it in context with the statutes of your country because there are certain countries where actually the statutes give an exception and they allow the state or government to actually uh, run, for example, cable wires or gas pipes or even um, water pipes in your land for the benefit of your neighbors or for the whole community generally. But of course, the position is that there must always, to, there must always be adequate compensation if the state is going to do so. So basically that's it as pertains trespass to the subsoil. Let's now proceed to look at uh, two very interesting doctrines under the tort of trespass to land. And the first one is the tort of continuing trespass or the, rather not the tort, but the doctrine of continuing trespass. Very, very important to note. And please, for purposes of this, I encourage you to look at the case of Holmes versus Wilson. It's a case of 1839, um, 10A and E, page 50. Or you can actually also look at the case of 
um, Konskia versus Goodman Limited, again a case of 1928, 1KB, page 421, which actually establishes the, 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 the principle, the doctrine of continuing trespass. And this doctrine is important, and basically uh, trespass, whether by way of personal entry or really by placing things on the claimant's land may amount to continuing um, uh, trespass and give rise to an action uh, of a day to day as long as the, the object you've placed on the land continues to stay there. So assuming you get a piece of, uh, uh, let's say, of property or item and then you place it or even machinery and then you place it on another person's land, the same can actually amount to a continuing trespass and therefore that would be trespass um, uh, to land under the doctrine of continuing trespass. Very, very, very important to note. And uh, just like I earlier shared with you the case of Holmes versus Wilson, uh, please the brief facts in this case were that highway authorities supported a road by wrongfully uh, building a buttress. I hope you understand what a buttress is. A buttress basically is a structure of stone or brick which is built against a wall to support it. Okay, So these authorities went on to build a buttress on someone's land, but for a good purpose really because the buttress was intended to support um, um, to support um, a, a building. So they paid full compensation. However, when they were building the buttress, they paid full compensation in an action for trespass. Okay, So the owner sued them, then they compensated him for building the buttress on his land to support a certain structure. Now, they were nevertheless again held liable in a further action for trespass. So the owner went on, but went to court again, sued them for trespass, and then court again held them liable, regardless of the fact that they had actually fully compensated the owner of this land for the buttress which they had actually erected. Why? Because they had not removed the buttress. Okay, so they had to go on and remove the buttress because this amounted to continuous trespass under the tort of trespass to land. So let's now proceed to look at another interesting doctrine under trespass to land, which is known as uh, the doctrine of ab initio or trespass ab initio. Very interesting. And really here, the rule states that a person who enters land lawfully, but subsequently abuses that right of entry will be liable for the entire transaction, not merely the portion of it which follows the abuse. Very, very important. And the locus classicus here really is the six carpenters case. It's a very old case, but it's the locus classicus. It's a case of 1610-8CO RIP, page 146. And basically the brief facts of this case were that six carpenters entered a public house, which was actually the queen's head. Uh, privilege where they actually consumed a quarter of wine. They just consumed a quarter of wine, which was worth seven uh, Ds, and then bread, which was again worth one D, and then they refused to pay. So they entered, they ref you know, they consumed these products and they refused to pay. Now, the issue was whether the refusal to pay by the six carpenters made their entry into the public house tortious, whether it actually amounted to a tort under trespass to land. And court went on to hold that when a person has permission or authority to enter premises or a place, he will be a trespasser ab initio if that purpose is abused, for example, by a theft. Now, the courts deem that the entry was in fact for that unlawful purpose and therefore it would be held to amount to a trespass. So if you enter a certain area for a lawful purpose, but then after entering that area or someone's land, you then commit a crime or a tort, for example, on that land, then the same would be taken by court to amount to trespass ab initio. Then court will take it that actually from the onset, you entered that piece of land to commit that tort. And that is basically uh, the doctrine of trespass ab initio. And this doctrine has actually recently been cemented and further fortified in the case of Elias versus Pasmo, and it's a recent, fairly recent case really compared to the Six Carpenters case, and this is a case of 1934, volume 2 KB, page 164. Please go and read that case, check it up in the law report, and comb the whole of it. Very, very, very important. But just briefly about this, what, what happened in this case are that documents were seized by police officers who were executing a warrant. Now, some documents were seized unlawfully, and it was held that they were trespassers. As to the documents which were 
unlawfully seized. Now, there were no trespassers ab initio, which would have made um, them liable for damage done to the front door when, of course, entry was effected, as the entry, of course, was by virtue of an independent ground, namely the warrant. So very, very important to note, they entered the house by way of a warrant, which at first really was lawful, but then when they entered inside, they seized some documents unlawfully, and of course, court held that they became trespassers at the initial, because at first, yes, they entered lawfully, you know, by way of warrant, but then after entering into the, the premises, they seized some documents which were out of the scope of their seizure, and therefore court held that at that material time, when they committed that illegality, that amounted to trespass ab initio. So let's now proceed to the last segment of our total trespass to land, and that is basically the defenses to trespass to land. So what are some of the defenses if you're charged or rather, sorry, not charged per se, because under tort law, we, we never use aspects such as crime or being charged, which really applies to criminal law. So assuming you've been sued for the tort of trespass to land, what are some of the defenses that actually a defendant uh, can raise, which are recognized under the law? So we're going to look at about three to four defenses, and the first one is consent. So that's really a solid defense. If you're sued for trespass to land, you can always raise the defense of consent and basically uh, here if you enter land with the permission of the person who has invited you they later on cannot turn around to sue you for a trespass to land provided that you stayed on that land with their permission or as we earlier saw if they ask you to leave they must give you reasonable time to walk out or to leave the land uh, and if they don't give you that reasonable time and they maybe assault you or anything the same cannot amount to trespass to land it only amounts to trespass to land if they give you reasonable time to leave and within that reasonable time you don't leave then your continued stay on that land would actually amount to trespass to land so consent if you have the consent of the other person then definitely that is a solid watertight defense let's now proceed to look at um, another defense which is known as lawful authority. Now, the police and others may really have an authority to enter property, of course, by virtue of statute. For example, in most countries, if not all, police officers have actually powers to enter into premises with a warrant, to break in, maybe to, uh, to stop an offense from happening, or to carry out a search, or to carry out an arrest, or anything. So statutes really, for almost all the countries around the world, permit uh, the police so it gives them powers to actually uh, enter into land to, to prevent the commission of crime. So that's another defense, especially this can be raised by police, for example, or by authority that has that permission to carry out a lawful activity. The third defense that you can actually raise is the defense of necessity. Now, of course, a trespass to land may be excused if it occurs, for example, as a result of necessity, either to save life or property. So assuming uh, someone is dying or someone is drowning onto a neighbor's land, uh, maybe someone has a swimming pool in their one acre or their home, and then you enter into that person's land to save uh, the other person from drowning, or maybe if the house is under fire and then maybe the house was locked and people are, you know, burning inside, you enter there, break the windows, break the doors to save life, uh, then definitely if you're charged for trespass to land or to property, you can always really raise the, the defense of necessity saying, look, it was necessary for me to save life. I couldn't look on. And court will definitely hear you because saving life is a priority and courts will always treasure that. Please look at the case of Esco Petroleum Company Limited versus South Pole Corporation. It's a case of 1953 Volume 3, All England Reports, page 864. And basically here, the case involved the discharge of oil from a stricken tanker to save not just the ship, but also the crew as well. Uh, of course, Mr. Justice Delvin said at first instance in that judgment that the safety of human lives really belongs to a different scale of values from the safety of property. So again, Justice Delvin there recognizing the fact that life and saving life supersedes any other aspect it supersedes supersedes the value of saving property property can never be compared or, uh, or, or even uh, compared or put on an equivalent scale 
with uh, the life of a human being. Life is priceless, and at any opportunity to save it, uh, then we'll always save it, and the courts will always recognize that. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we had to cover for our class. Again, if you've not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. It's very important for you, really, so that you don't miss out. Turn on the notification bell. Just click on it. Contact us if you're interested in private law tutorial sessions. Our numbers are down in the description box. You can WhatsApp us, contact us for research, or anything really related to the law will be able to help you. Thank you very much. I will meet in another class. Bye-bye.